it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. I was glad when they said, let's go into the house of the Lord. There's no other place I'd rather be than here with God. Hallelujah. Here in God's house with God's people. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning. Thank you, Father, for starting us on our way. Thank you, Lord. We need you so much. We need you every day. And we thank you, Lord, that we have brand new mercies today. We thank you, Lord, that you daily load us with benefits. We thank you, but most of all, we thank you for Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our Savior. And Father God, I thank you for every door that's open in your name today. For wherever your word goes forth, it will never return unto you void or unproductive. So I thank you, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you speak to my mouth, through my mouth and through my vocal cords the words that you would have me to say to your sheep. And Father God, I will for always give you the pleasure, give you the praise, I mean, and give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory be to God. I'm going to talk about finding God's will for your life. Praise Jesus. Are you fulfilling God's will for your life? Do you even know what God has ordained? For your life. If you don't, you are not alone. So many believers don't know if they're walking in the will of God for their life, but that shouldn't be. We can know God's will for us. Let's look at Ephesians 5, 17. Praise Jesus. I thank God that the church is full this morning. Glory be to God. Look at the angels. Hallelujah. Just calling those things to be not. As <laughs> though so they were. Ephesians 5, 17. We're talking about finding God's will for your life. If you have it, say amen. amen. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. The Amplified says, Therefore, do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish, but understanding and firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is. The New Living Translation says, don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. How can we expect to build God's kingdom if we don't know what we're supposed to do? God has a unique plan for each and every believer. He had a plan for us before we were even born. You were not created by accident and you are not a mistake. Let's look at Jeremiah 1 and 5. Jeremiah 1 and 5. God had a plan for us before we were even born. You believe that? Amen. Jeremiah 1 and 5, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordain you a prophet to the nations. See, God knew us just like he knew Jeremiah. Before we were even a twink in our daddy's eyes, before they even got together, God knew us and had plans for us. Amen? Your presence on this earth at this time and in this place was preordained by God. Your appearance, your gifts and your talents, even your personality is all a part of God's plan for you. You were born for a specific purpose, and there is no one just like you. Amen? You haven't been placed on this earth by chance. You were ordained by God, and he has special plans just for you. You ought to be excited about that. Paul said in Galatians 1, 15 and 16, but even before I was born, God chose me, and called me by his marvelous grace. Why? To reveal his son to me, so that I would proclaim the good news about Jesus to the Gentiles. God had planned for Paul to preach the gospel before Paul was even born. He didn't have to wait for Paul to grow up and see if he had the gifts and talents and see if he could do it. God had already planned for Paul to teach the gospel. Amen? God knows the end from the beginning. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. We have to remember that God does not call those that are qualified. 
but he qualifies those that he calls. Sometimes your talents may indicate what God's will is for your life, but so many people have gifts and talents that they don't even know about. So if you only look at what you are good at to determine your purpose in life, you might totally miss it. You may be doing good works, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you are doing what God called you to do. You may be singing on the praise team when God called you to be a pastor or a teacher. God calls us to do what is beyond our natural abilities. Why? So that we have to lean on him. We have to depend on him. We have to trust in him and confidently rely on him to do it. Amen? Glory be to God. <laughs> he, he wants us to depend on him to get the job done. See, the reason I can stand here and teach the God's word is because he gives me the grace to do it. He gives me the grace to get up early in the morning and study sometimes for hours. Amen? Because God gives me the grace to do it. He gives me the desire to spend time in his word, meditating in his word, and enjoying every minute of it. It's only by the grace of God that we do what we do. I didn't spend as much time in the word as I do now because I recognize that God called me to teach the word. And when you are teaching the word, you are held accountable for what you say to God's sheep. So you have to get up. You have to spend time with him. You have to find out what his will is for you. Amen. I sit at his feet like Mary did so that I can learn from him. I spent a lot of time in the word just getting to know him, just listening to hear his voice. He said, my sheep, hear my voice. Amen. Sometimes you need to just sit in his presence and just marvel about how good God is how much God loves us. Amen. The God of the universe loves us with an unconditional love. That ought to put a shout in you. Glory be to God. I've heard some people say that they fell out of love with their husband or their wife or they fell out of love with family members or, or they're not speaking to one another or they got separated from one another. But you know what? There is nothing, no thing that can separate us from God's love. Hallelujah. His love is everlasting. Let's look at Romans the 8th chapter. Good morning, First Lady. Good morning, Linda. Let's look at Romans 8, and we're going to look at verses 38 and 39. Nothing can separate us from God's love. Romans 8, 38, and 39. If you have it, say amen. But I am persuaded, Paul says, that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Absolutely nothing can separate us from God's love. Amen? We, that's one thing you can bank on. God's love for you. The New Living Translation says, and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above, nor in the earth below, Nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. When you look at the things that are going on in your life, when you're going through trials and, and tribulations and when it looks like, you know, everything's falling apart in your life, all hell is breaking loose in your life, you can stand on the promises of God. Amen? I See, I know because I've been there. God's words, his promises are what gave me comfort when I was going through some things. I just reflect on the word of God that said that I was more than a conqueror. I would reflect on the word of God that says that I'm a victor and not a victim. Amen? Amen. God's word will comfort us and give us strength. We are all going to go through some trials. 
that's a given. You're going to go through some tribulations. Amen. Jesus never said that life would be a bed of roses. And even if they were, even roses have thorns. Amen. But Jesus said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. When you are going through tough times, never ever feel or think that God has deserted you. Why? Because he promised that he would. He said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. And God is not a man that he should lie. Amen. God's words will strengthen you. They will give you the will to keep on keeping on. God is a very present help in our times of trouble. If you keep your mind stayed on him, if you keep your mind on his promises, he'll keep you in perfect peace. He said he would. Amen. Even in the midst of the storms of life, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. And we find that joy in his presence. For in his presence is fullness of joy. Glory be to God. We're talking about finding God's will for your life. Our God loves us so much, we should have a strong desire to know what he has planned for our life. God's perfect will for us is worth finding. Amen? Never have a case of Ross and Ross attitude toward the things of God. Whatever will be, will be. No! Seek his face. Find out what you should be doing. And when you find out, then you can be about the Father's business. Amen? God's business is my business. When I'm being about his business, he takes care of my business. Amen? Got to recognize that we're in partnership with God. How awesome is that? We're in partnership with the God of the universe. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Peace and joy will come when you are in the center of his will for your life. His blessing and his anointing will always be on what you do when you do what God has called you to do. So you can't make up your own agenda and then ask God to bless it. It doesn't work that way. Amen. We have to do God's will, according to my brother-in-law, Andrew, and we have to do it his way. Amen. God has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us, and we all need to be seeking his will for our life. You have to be in the place that God wants you to be in. Do you know the plans and purposes for your life? Do you know what God has already preordained for you? Let's look at Psalm 139. Praise the Lord, my blessings on legs have arrived. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Psalm 139, and we're going to look at verses 15 and 16. It's good to know what God has planned for us, and we can know it. <clears throat> Psalm 139, 15 and 16, I'll be reading from the NIV version. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth... Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. The New Living Translation says, You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Now see, I made up my mind a long time ago to just believe the Bible. If you can show it to me in the Bible, I believe it. But I know a lot of Christians that don't let the Bible get in the way of what they believe. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't believe that our lives were preordained by God and that he has a destiny for us. But these verses we've been reading should convince anyone that God knew us before we were born and he has preordained a, plan, a specific plan and purpose for our life. God had all our days written out before we were even born. And I used to use these scriptures when I used to go and minister at the jail to encourage a lot of those ladies over there that had been beaten down by the circumstances of life that felt like they were useless and no good and that they were an accident and should have never been born. I used to encourage them with these words that God had a plan for you even before you were in the womb. Amen? 
Every person has a preordained plan for their life, but God is not going to make it come to pass. We have to spend time with him. We have to seek his face. And it's in that time that we spend with him, reading his word, praying and doing his will, listening to him, that he will reveal his will to us. See, time spent with God is not wasted time. Time spent with God will always benefit us. But if we're too busy, if it's too much to do in the day and not enough hours in the day that we don't spend no time with him, not asking him what he wants us to do, we'll never learn what his will is for our life. You got to spend time with God. You can't assume that God's will is going to automatically come to pass in your life. God's will doesn't always come to pass. Now that'll ruffle some religious feathers. But God's will doesn't always come to pass. Amen? God doesn't force his will or his plan on anyone. He didn't want the Israelites to have a king. He wanted to be their king. But they bawled and squalled and hollered until they got that king. God told them what the king was going to do. Amen? So his will doesn't always come to, pla come to pass. Yes, God is sovereign. He is supreme. He does not force his will on us. Amen? We have the responsibility to submit our will to God's will. Let's look at uh, 2 Peter 3 and 9. His will is for everyone to be saved. But look at 2 Peter 3 and 9. Glory be to God. You got to seek and search to find out God's will for your life. If you have it, say amen. 2 Peter 3 and 9 The Lord is not slight concerning his promise As some men count slightness But is long suffering to us ward Not willing that any should perish But that all should come to repentance Now see you got to have some help To help you misunderstand this verse It says that God is not willing For any to perish Amen God wants everybody to come to repentance But we know that not everyone does we know that people are going to hell every single day. And this shows us that God's will will not automatically come to pass. God wants everyone to find and walk in the purpose that he has ordained for them, but not everyone will. And it's not God's fault. Once we realize we are responsible for discovering God's will, the next step is to start seeking God for direction. He's not hiding his will from us, amen? But we got to seek it. We got to spend some time with it. We got to get out the boat and start walking on the water. And believe me, God will not let you drown. If you start to sink, he'll be right there. But at least get out of the boat. It's like at Christmas time when we unwrap our gifts to see what we have. You have to get the, get the gift, remove the wrapping to see what's on the inside, amen? God will help us to unwrap his will and purpose for our life when we seek his face, when we spend time with him. Let's look at Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29, and we're going to look at verses 11 through 13. I want to do God's will, and I want to do it his way. That calls for spending hours and hours at his feet. Jeremiah 29, verses 11 through 13. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. The Amplified says, For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. Then you will call upon me, you will come and pray to me, and I will hear and heed you. Then you will seek me, inquire for and require me as a vital necessity, and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Now notice that the emphasis here on seeking God is to seek him with all your heart heart when you reach the point that you need to know you gotta know without a doubt the will of God for your life 
you will begin to seek him with all your heart. Look at Matthew 7. Matthew the 7th chapter. Finding God's will for your life is so very, very important. Matthew the 7th chapter, and we're going to look at verses 7 and 8. And this is Jesus talking. How you know that? It's in red. Read the red. Amen. When you read your Bible, if you don't know where to start, read the red. Because that's Jesus talking. Matthew 7 and 7, verse, verses 7 and 8. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. See, Jesus is telling us here to pursue the things of God, to go after the things of God, to seek out the things of God. See, people give up after a few half-hearted attempts or efforts, and then they wonder why things aren't working in their life. You know, they say, well, I don't know what God's will is for me. I can't find God's will. Well, when people say that, they're lying against the truth. Because the truth says, the truth which is God's word says, that if you seek me, you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. Amen? So stop doing things half-heartedly and seek God with all your heart. With all your heart means that you can't do it every now and then. You can't just seek God on Sunday and not spend any more time with him until, until next Sunday. Just like we feed our physical bodies every single day, sometimes four or five times a day, with snakes on the side, we need to feed our spirit every day, as often as we can during the day. Amen? We need to eat the word of God every chance we can. Get that word down on the inside of you so when you open your mouth, that word will come out of your mouth. I have had people to talk to me at great length about how sick they are and not one time did I hear by his stripes I'm healed. See, when you get that word in you, you'll focus more on the promises of God and you won't be concerned about the problem. Amen. You'll cast that care on him. You'll know that the solution to the problem can be found in the promises of God. Amen. Your destiny is preordained but it will not automatically come to pass. We have to put forth some effort in discovering God's will for us. There is a power and an anointing that only comes when we are fulfilling God's plan for our life. So I encourage you to find time to spend with God. Find time to read your Bible. Amen. Time with God is what? Never wasted. It'll help you to discover and know God's will for your life. Romans 12, you don't have to turn there. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, Present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. In other words, when you present your body to God, when you spend time with God, you ain't doing no big deal. Okay, that's your reasonable service. For all that Jesus has done for us, it's your reasonable service to read your Bible and to spend some time with him. Amen? Amen. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. See, as we renew our mind with the word of God, as we seek him with all of our heart, he will reveal his plan for our life. We serve a good God. Amen. Now, next week... Um, if God doesn't change my message, I want to teach you on fulfilling God's will for your life. After you find out that will, his will, you need to know how to fulfill his will for your life. Amen? Is that all right? Now, to those that may be listening on the Internet or may get this CD and you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, I encourage you, I invite you to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior right now, today. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past. It doesn't matter who you are. God loves you so much that he sent Jesus Christ to die for your sins. 
So if you don't know him, you need to know him. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, and 10, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. But with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So if you would like to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please repeat this prayer after me. Father God, I know I am a sinner. I choose to turn away from sin and live my life for you. I believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again so that I might be saved. I choose to follow you and I ask that you fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Lord, that I'm saved right now. I thank you, Father, that I have eternal life right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, you are now a member of the family of God. You are blessed beyond measure with every spiritual blessing. I encourage you to get into a word of faith church. Get into the word of God so that you can grow. Amen. Amen. Give God some praise.